Hey everybody, this is uh, George Everett Smith coming to you live again um, in relation to I Am Hotep Jed, Atum L, my Dwabi and more name. Um, for those familiar with my previous videos, you know, the last time I um, was appealing child support, I actually got denied off a of technicality um, due to time constraints uh, in my appellant, California State Appellant Court case, 4th, Di 4th District Division 1. Um, so recently, I received a document from uh, the San Diego Department of Child Support Services. I guess they mailed it out on February 1st, but I don't check my mail a lot, so I just mailed it back on the 17th. So this is, uh, I wanted to go over this quickly. This is just a notice from them. Um, you know, they want some arrears, which don't really exist because there's no contract to validate the debt. Uh, so they're just saying they'll go after, you know, my property, uh, money and assets held by a financial institution. If they did that, that would obviously be illegal. But I did call my bank ahead of time and ask the girl, you know, what's the procedure for when, you know, a child support agency calls in and says you owe money. She said they actually do do their due diligence and actually check for a court order. Not a support order, a court order from a judge. Um, in my case, you know, I didn't sign nothing. Uh, so there's no contract. So a judge more than likely would not um, sign off on a, enforcing a contract that doesn't exist because uh, I would catch them with their pants down if I ever came back for a redress and then, then the paper trail would lead back to them so they got to think well the guy's smart enough not to sign the child support registration paperwork or paternity acknowledgement agreement so he got a little sense about him he may come back for a, a proper redress using the court, or the appellant court or the federal, so they're not gonna want that. Uh, you know, other methods that they use to uh, get money from you, like stealing your unemployment or disability, that's actually happened to me for disability, uh, personal injury settlements, worker compensation, retirement benefits, which is ridiculous, and other payments or credits due to, due to you. Now this one right here, the portion of money owed to you as an independent contractor, they can't really do that because you're not in that type of contract. You're not an employee. You're actually working for yourself. So you get paid first. That's a business to business transaction. So you're going to get paid first. So employees, uh, there's something called the Currency Control Act or something like that. I have to look it up again, but when that act came out, I think right after the New Deal, um, I think that's Truman or Roosevelt. I think, it's, mm, I think it's Roosevelt. I think it's Roosevelt. I think it's before Truman. Uh, yeah, he fucked all employees basically. Said so you got to pay the government first before you get paid, and you can make some withholding claims, but we're going to get the money before you do. But, you know, America is all about business. So if you own a business, you get paid first and it's your responsibility to pay taxes. So this is false. They can't do that because you're also another type of entity. So they can't do that. And of course, they're going to try to suspend any driver's license, any professional licenses, passports and all this other bullshit. Um, yeah, this past due support amount they'll put they'll report it to the credit agencies i already got one of them removed i'm trying to get the other two removed uh, takes a little time but they can't prove the debt that's that's the ultimate they can't prove shit so that's you know their fault so here's here's the paperwork um kind of illustrating or kind of depicting what my rights are under their ju under their uh administrative process and I'll just read through it here uh, you have the right to contest the amount of past support due 
her uh, passport owed, which I don't owe anything because there's no contract saying that I owe anything that created an obligation upon me uh, as a man. And you may request an administrative review, okay? If you want to request an administrative review or have any questions regarding this notice or your past due support amount, you must contact the local child support agency, LCSA, listed below. Someone from that agency will explain how you can have your case reviewed by the LCSA. Uh, and then it says a right to judicial review. You may seek a judicial determination of the amount of past due you owe while your request is pending in court. Now, this is kind of like extremely misleading. Uh, you would have to file an appeal or go to a, a legislative court to have a repeat appeal. So they're not exactly gonna tell you how to do that. Uh, and in my case in San Diego, it says for me to contact the family law facilitator. These people are very dishonest people. I've dealt with them twice before. One guy actually helped me, a Native American brother, he actually helped me uh, try to get an order of stay. But then the last time I went to get my case, they call it a side judgment. I actually went to child support, talked to the caseworker, let her know if my baby mom is still working. She's supposed to be on welfare to receive benefits. And uh, she didn't argue with that. She just said, well, what do you want to do? And I said, I want, I want the case dismissed, terminated, thrown away, whatever the hell you want to call it. They call it a side judgment. So then I went to the courthouse to see the family law facilitator. And it was some, some bitch with like a peg leg trying to intimidate me trying to say I can't appeal, and I told her, well, show me the law that says I can't appeal. They are unable to provide me that, so she was just blowing hot air. I mean, she got no valid points. She was an idiot. <laughs> we won't go over this part because, again, there's no contract, so I don't owe anything. Federal, yeah, federal, yeah, they probably talk about taking that, but here's the real interesting part. Uh, this is the complaint resolution um, as far as them having a process and a procedure on the administrative side, the executive side, because, you know, there's three branches of government. There's judicial, there's legislative, and there's executive. And two or several more, two or more of those branches can't collude with each other to go against the people or go against another branch of government, um, or, go, or go against a certain group of people, which would be like a bill of attainder. You know, the Constitution, I believe it was Article 1, Section 9, said no bills of attainder shall pass. So anyway, let's, uh, let's just read this a little bit. So complaint resolution, state hearing information, Right to complaint resolution. If you have a complaint against a local child support agency for any action or inaction regarding your child support case, you have the right to request complaint resolution from the local child support agency. Uh, yeah, so that, that goes against, you can file a complaint against them for any action regarding your child support case, which is not really your case. It's some shit they made up on your behalf, but. Uh, moving along, you can make a complaint in writing by completing the request for complaint form, or you can call the local child support agency. Important, your request for complaint resolution must be made within 90 days from the date you knew or should have known about the subject of your complaint. All right, so you had 90 days I would say 90 days from the day that I got this document to file my complaint with the local child support agency. The local child support agency has 30 days from the date it receives your complaint to give you a written resolution of your complaint. Unless the local child support agency needs more information or time to resolve your complaint. The local child support agency will contact you if it needs more information or time to resolve your complaint. Still doesn't matter they need to have it in 30 days. Right? 
to a state hearing if the local child support agency does not respond to you within 30 days from receiving your complaint, you have the right to request a state hearing before an administrative law judge. Important, your request for a state hearing must be made within 90 days after you complain to the local child support agency. So this is 90 days after you um, after you initialize the complaint with the local child support agency. So they'll have 30 days, so you got really 60 days in between the 30 and the 90 to try to get a state hearing. But let's read on. If the local child support agency does not respond to you within 30 days of making your complaint and you are not satisfied with the local child support agency's complaint resolution or response, you have the right to request a state hearing before an administrative law judge. Important, your request for a state hearing must be made within 90 days after you receive the local child support agency's written response to your complaint. So they're kind of playing around here, they're saying, well, if you want a state hearing, you got to you got to do it 90 days after you initially complained with the local child support. And then later on here, it says your request for a state hearing must be made within 90 days after you received the local child support agency's written response to your complaint. So I guess there's two ways you can go. If they don't answer, you can go with the 90 days after you initially filed it. And if you don't like their answer, you're not satisfied their answer after the written response, you got 90 days after you get that written response. It says you can request a state hearing in writing by sending a request for state hearing form to the state hearing office, or you can call here. Um, they'll let you know the time date. Not all complaints can be heard. State hearings will only be granted for the following issues. An application for child support has been denied or not been acted upon within the required time frame. The child support services case has been acted upon in violation of federal or state law or regulation or California Department of Child Support Services policy letter, which is, um, I would say that's more like the, um, oh, I'm not for sure, but I'm taking a guess here, the child support manual or has not been acted on within the required time frame, including services for establishment, modification, enforcement, the child support orders, and child support accountings. Child support collections have not been distributed. Yeah, yada, 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 you have to read that if you want. So here's another uh, interesting part here too, is they're saying what's, what can't be heard at a child support administrative state hearing, right? And uh, you're gonna see a lot of court orders court motions uh court orders uh, child custody which is family law which is outside of the jurisdiction of child support so let's read child support issues that must be addressed by motion order to show cause or appeal in court yeah they're not part of the court system so they have no jurisdiction there a review of any court order for child support or child support arrears again that's made by a judge not a hearing officer or, or um child support commissioner in my case. A court order for equivalent determination of paternity, a court order for spousal support, child visitation, that's family court, complaints of alleged discourteous treatment by a local child support agent employee unless such conduct resulted in a hearable action or inaction. Um, I don't know what this is. As a, it says every child support agency has an ob, bud, ombuds person available to help you through a complaint resolution. Yeah, this is to try to deter you. I guarantee you this is a, they try to deter you. <laughs> and right here it says the ombuds bud person cannot represent you at a state here. Of course, they're, they're only going to represent the county, so. To prepare you for your state. I don't need to help them to prepare me for my state hearing. They're, they're dumbasses. How can they help me? I can help them. You know, because I'm the God and they're pretty much just pretty much just nothing to me. Uh, so anyway, so I got that. Now I know that I have a right to complain. I got a right to uh, raise my child the way I want to. 
I don't have to I don't have to contract with them because that's what they want. They want you to contract with them. You know what I mean? So that's what we kind of want to kill. We want to kill their ability to contract with us. We're not going to give our consent and we need to show them they're in distant violation of the law. So I wrote this letter in response to the, to the local child support agency uh, titled Notice a Complaint for Fraudulent Practices by San Diego Child Support Services. So right here, you know, this is where I get into it. This is how I'm going to address this issue. So I said, I have acknowledged and received your letter about a past debt of $3,344.53 to the County of San Diego, California Child Support Services received on February 17, 2017. However, making false claims about a debt owed is a clear violation of the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, 15 U.S.C. 1692F, subsection 8081, the collection of any amount, including any interest, fee, charge, or expense incidental to the principal obligation, unless such amount is expressly authored by the agreement creating the debt or permitted by law. Since there is no legal agreement between myself and child support, there is no debt, as the statute clearly states. Right? They can't really collect on anything unless such amount is expressly authorized by agreement creating the debt. Right? That's all I'm saying. Um, you may move forward in your illegal activities under the color of law. However, doing so gives me a chance to redress any issues of torts against me, my property, or any trespasses on my estate. The Fair Debt Collection Practices Act 15 U.S.C. 1692G B titled Disputed Debts. If the, co if the consumer notifies the debt collector in writing within the 30-day period, which is what this is, described in subsection A of this section that the debt or any portion thereof is disputed or that the consumer requests the name and address of the original creditor, the debt collector shall cease collection of the debt and any disputed portion thereof until the debt collector obtains verification of the debt or a copy of a judgment or the name and address of the original creditor and a copy of such verification or judgment or name and address of the original creditor is mailed to the consumer by the debt collector which has not been done collection activities and communications that do not otherwise violate this subchapter may continue during the 30-day period referred to in this subsection A, unless the consumer has notified the debt collector in writing that the debt or any portion of the debt is disputed or that the consumer requests the name and address of the original creditor. Any collection activities and communications during the 30-day period may not overshadow or be in consistence with the, with the disclosure of the consumer's right to dispute the debt or request the name and address of the original creditor. Admission of Liability the failure of a consumer to dispute the validity of a debt under this section may not be construed by any court as an admission of liability by the consumer. So I'm notifying them that I'm disputing or any portion of the debt is disputed or that the consumer requested, right, requests the name and address of the original creditor, the debt collector shall cease collection of the debt and I'm disputing it so by law they need to stop right we'll let them violate it if they choose to uh, but they need to stop if they're truly following the law which we know they're not this is a, a, a loan sharking gangster type business and I also address that too in later paragraphs and also the court cannot construe uh, my failure, my failure to dispute to dispute the validity of a debt as an admission of liability. So I'm still not liable, even if I don't say shit. You know what I'm saying? They don't. So they really got nothing. 
All they have is uh, gangsterisms going on. Thuggery. Okay, so I said, as you can see very plainly, that if the consumer disputes the debt, then all collection actions must cease. No exceptions. If your legal activities continue, you will be in violation of this statute, which is enforceable by law. This is a notification that I, George Smith, a flesh and blood man and not a federal employee, nor obligor, am disputing the legitimacy of this alleged claim that I owe the child San Diego County Child Support Services any monies allegedly owed unless, one, they, Department of Child Support, can furnish an original copy of the agreement that created the debt, and two, can prove that they have any jurisdiction in this matter at all dealing with this proposed transaction. This forced proposition is subject to the Clearfield Trust Doctrine established in the case of Clearfield Trust versus United States, 318 U.S., page 363-369, decision made in 1943. The United States Supreme Court stated that governments descend to a, to the level of, uh, to a level, a mere, of, how does it say, of a mere, okay, governments descend to the level of a mere private corporation and takes all the characters of a mere private citizens where private commercial paper notes and securities are concerned. For purposes of such of suit, such corporations and individuals are regarded as an entity entirely separated from government. Since the agency merely acts as a business for profit, if a citizen chooses not to contract with them, <clears throat> a contract cannot be forced upon a man or woman who refuses the contract. Going against the will of these men and women are not unlike actions that are similar to the mafia and loan shark tactics used in the early 20th century by crime families ran by Al Capone and Meyer Lansky. Consent is the word of the day and cannot be coerced or threatened by the San Diego County Department of Child Support to extract more monies out of unsuspecting litigants. I am disputing the existence of this made-up debt, and under the statutory law, this debt is not valid. You have 30 days to respond to my letter before further action is taken to have an administrative state hearing about the facts of this case. Without prejudice, of course, George E. Smith. So this letter right here, I mean, clearly establishes my position as far as my point of view and perspective on this made up debt, that the debt cannot exist um, without a legal contract, without an agreement signed. So they can front all they want and say that you have a past due arrears, but the arrears don't exist because there's no contract. And the laws on my side here and I'm just using it to stand my ground. I'm not even trying to attack them with it. I'm pretty much just standing my ground. So this is just another step in the process, fellas, of, of me claiming my independence, um, me being free, uh, not bound to any uh, obligation or duties under an instrument or contract and can definitely not and those duties or obligations can definitely not be forced upon me if i don't submit or uh, give consent uh, so i would advise you know people not to sign shit with child support keep them it's okay if they keep you know trying to steamroll you bring into these fake courts where they don't even have a court reporter you know so on and so forth because once you're armed with this knowledge, um, you can always redress the issue, just like uh, Rick W. did, always redress the issue and get monies back. Matter of fact, I'm charging them interest uh, on the monies they, they took from me. Um, actually, my last check, they didn't garnish. So I'm, I'm wondering what's going on. I'll keep you guys updated about that. But... Um, I'm charging them like 15%, bro. 
each month. So when I go back and I have to sue these mother these motherfuckers, I'm charging them fifteen percent of whatever that balance is. Uh, fifteen percent. That's for you know the you know the time I had to spend uh, educating child support themselves about their own laws. So um, you know, like Amen said, these people don't have any power and they're a separate organizational unit under 42 U.S.C. 654 Section 3. They don't have any, um, they don't have shit. They just don't have anything, but they pretend like they do, you know, and that they throw you, you know, throw you in the slammer for a couple of days. You make sure that shit gets redressed too, man. And don't let that break you or take you from your square because that's, that's what they will try to do, bro. That's what they're going to try to do. But anyway, I wanted to, um, I was on a phone call with a partner of mine in Texas. Uh, Shouts out to Bishop Blueprint. And I was telling him about this parental rights doctrine that, you know, everybody can read. Uh, oh, I should have went to the Supreme Court one. Hold on, let me go back. All right. Um, yeah, the, oh, you can get a lot of case law here. I know. I think Amen has some of these, but there's a lot of case laws here that uh, that the Supreme Court has said basically the state cannot tell you how to raise your child. It's up to you to raise your child. Um, I think I have a. I'm gonna let. Historically, our nation consistently maintained that parents possess the fundamental right to raise their children if they see fit. This belief was upheld by our judiciary in numerous Supreme Court cases that reflect the American people's long-standing commitment to parental rights. The excerpts below are drawn from key Supreme Court cases protecting the right of parents to raise their children. It is critical that we place this traditional Supreme Court doctrine on parental rights into the explicit text of the United States Constitution in order to preserve vital show parent relationship. The principles below are referred to as the parental rights doctrine. All right, all right, beautifully read. Uh, Google something. <laughs> it's a plug-in to Google, it's called a uh, Speak it. So if you highlight it, right click it, you can say speak it. And, sh and uh, you know, the girl will go ahead and read that for you. But these, these court cases are part of the parental rights doctrine. So um, this, this goes to back up your claim if you have to use this in a court, that if the court starts dictating you how to raise your kids, you, you stop the motherfuckers in their tracks and you refer to these case laws. You know, because you want to control the judge. The more case law you use, the more precedent you set. And attorneys call it uh, controlling the judge. So that's a little something, you know, I picked up. Um, so just wanted to show you guys that real quick. That I've heard there's some kind of uh, parents' rights in Texas, parents' rights. March in Texas. Let's see if we can find this real quick. Um, um, uh, maybe it's called. Maybe we can put in parents' rights. Mm, that's interesting. Voluntarily relinquishing relinquishing your parents for your parental rights in Texas. Okay. Fixed family courts. Let's see, let's see what this is. Interesting. Fixed family courts. Parents are about to find out if they have protected in divorce. Uh, I'm going to tell you right here, just from reading that first paragraph, that you have constitutional rights, as we just read, but from the Supreme Court, 
But if you signed a marriage license within the state, you give up your constitutional rights. So, no, you don't have any fucking rights. You gave it up. You know, you could have signed a private contract between you and your fiance and got married by the powers of the republic, which is the power of the people. You didn't have to go beg the government to get a uh, to get a marriage license, right? That's why when the guy marries you, he says, by the powers invested in me by the state of yada, 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 I now pronounce you man and wife. You motherfuckers didn't listen to that second, that uh, second to last sentence. By the powers of the state. And also, you need the powers of the state to get a divorce. So, I'm going to tell you right now. In, actually, da, 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 let's read on. Ron and Sherry Palmer accomplished what attorneys told them would be possible. The Eastern District Federal Court accepted their brief on Thursday that cites their family court judges ignore parental rights and children's rights and that the Texas Family Code violates the constitutional rights of parents and children. In Palmer et al. versus Paxson Jr. et al., Parents and attorneys have not been able to be heard by the federal courts on these constitutional violations before this. Told instead they were barred by numerous abstention doctrines. Well, the thing is, you're signing contracts and you're contracting yourself out of your constitutional rights. You don't need the state to get married. Draw up a private document between you and your baby's mom or your fiance, and you're married. Period. You don't need the state to get married. So anyway, I just wanted to show you guys about the parental rights doctrine set up and constituted within those case laws I showed you previously. But um, this is a little sidetrack. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I just started a website where I'm selling... Um, like iPhones, uh, TV, Samsungs, um, notebook PCs, gaming PCs, and my company is called IT Exchanges. Just wanna throw in some shameless advertising here. Uh, here's my site. You know what I'm saying? I got links to stuff, uh, 48 stuff. That's that's for works. That's for more uh, small businesses. You know what I mean? Uh, but I got. This is only the beginning. I also provide customer support, uh, data center migrations. You know, I ship anywhere in the world. You know, I got stuff on sale. I just, I'm just completing the site, so I don't have everything up here yet. But uh, it looks pretty good so far. I like what the developer did. Um, uh, this is I'm also, I'm also going to promote Yusef stuff here. He has a um, a program called Currency circulator where you, you know in the black communities um, I guess there was a number thrown out there by um, what well how much amount of money that black consumers are spending and we're spending 1.3 trillion but we don't spend nearly enough of it in our own neighborhoods so uh, he's actually designed a program to keep it's like network marketing he's keeping all of uh, trying to keep all the money in our neighborhood so you know I kind of promote his stuff here too so yeah if y'all want some please request it you can click this request for service and um, you can fill out all the stuff here you can just check one of these and then pretty much just write what you want to request and I could probably get it from one of my distributors you know what I'm saying but yeah feel free to, to check out the site man I got uh, some Cisco stuff up here, you know, I got uh, HP, Apple, um, iPhones and stuff. Um, these iPhones, I know the price looks, uh, well, actually, this one, you got to go through Verizon to get this. And, um, you know, because my distributor, at first, I thought I'd just get the phone, but I have to sell the phone with the service. So, so I can't really get it that low. I'll probably have to end up doing some finagling with the price and I might just get rid of it because I really don't like that business model and that's why Verizon is 
fucking losing a lot of sales. So anyway, uh, yeah, I just wanted to shamelessly promote my site. IT exchanges come here for all your electronic needs. Um, if you watch my video, I will. If you if you learned about my site through my video, I'll give you an extra five percent off. So just let me know. Give me your email address, and I'll send you a coupon. And uh, I'll hook you up, man. But uh, anyway, you know, shouts out to all the brothers in the struggle. Shouts out to all the Moors in the struggle. Shouts out to all the gods and the earths in the struggle. All my 5% brothers, Moor Science Temple of American brothers. Of course, my Nawabian Nation brothers. And also, speaking of Nawabian Nation, I also want to um, take you to our national uh, website here. Uh, our chief, the Maku set this up um, for people who are already in the nation. And um, that, that's our little, uh, that's our music. Of course, if you're more, you probably know who Malachi C or L is. Uh, here's a little disclaimer. You know, we got people copying stuff off of our site, putting it on their site. But anyway, man. <clears throat> interested in uh, belonging to a nation of your own, that's the Maku right here, um, you know, I would, you know, check out the website, make a couple phone calls, um, I believe we do have a number where you can call us at right here, uh, you know, if you're interested in nationalizing, uh, getting to know our government a little better, uh, getting to know some of the officers, it's all here, so. Feel free, feel free to you know drop us um, drop us a line you know what I'm saying but anyway man that's the end of my video today um, I'll keep you posted on um, what I do next but as far as uh, the child support goes I'm going to go through that administrative hearing and my goal is to get a decision whether good or bad if it's good and they dismiss it, cool. I don't anticipate they'll do that. I'm playing the worst case scenario. So I'm gonna keep standing behind the law and my God-given rights as a human being and understanding that uh, the government is formed by men. Uh, shit, I forgot it verbatim, I, I forgot it verbatim but Basically, uh, you can only be governed if you consent to be governed. But, you know, that's in the Declaration of Independence. And, um, you know, I just want to, you know, thank everybody for watching the video again. I know this one wasn't as put together as my last one, but um, I'm kind of doing it on the whim here. So, uh, you know, drop me a line, man. Drop me a comment what you think about the video, um, you know, any thoughts or comments that are more than welcome. You know, as long as they positive, all right? All right, man. I'm going to catch y'all later. Another episode, another day. Same shit, different toilet. I'm out.